All right. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. Is, this, is this good? Yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry about that. Okay, Janet. Okay. So, two things. Yes. On the on the main page for the the site, mm -hmm. you know, I've gotten a lot of clicks, but I was looking at the web traffic, and I think what I want to do is change that main picture, and the reason is it's got the electronics around his neck. Okay. And I noticed that the interests of the people that are clicking, and they may click a couple of times, but electronics. So I think they see that and think, don't read and think electronics. So I am, I, I would like to change, but I'm not sure how to change that front. Okay. Okay. So we can, so we can change that. Let me, let me, let me get a pen. Okay. Hold on a second. Okay. Can, can everybody hear me? Okay. Okay. Okay, so so let's talk about let's talk about what your niche is going to be, and which is part of what we're going to talk about today about niches to determine what what type of a graphic that you want on there. Well, I want um, I would like. I mean, the the people in there are are not are good. I like the people. I uh -huh. think it's just the electronics just that may be throwing somebody off. Okay, got it. Okay. So, okay. I mean, I like the the guy and the girl. I want I want you know both. Uh huh. I don't want them to be old like me. <laughs> I want them to be a little younger because that'll appeal to all ages. I think. Okay. Um, I mean, so it can be like you know kind of whatever, young, but not old. Okay. Uh, and then the other thing is I noticed on the, in the Instagram feed wasn't working again. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, is our Instagram feed working Steph? Where'd she go? Um, I have to check and see. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll have to check the Instagram. Sometimes you just have to go back in and log in again for it. But sometimes that does, that is a glitch with the software a little bit that it, it what Instagram changes their algor algorithms. Oh, Stephanie said that Instagram changes their algorithms, which I, that word kind of gets to me all the time. But um, <laughs> but I have to check and see. That does happen. Seem to happen a little bit with with the software, and so I can put in a ticket for that. Okay. And, and we'll work we'll work on that. Okay. So that so that's good. Yeah. So the Instagram. So that's yeah, those are just the two things. So when we can change the front page, then I'll go and do another ad. I think um, okay. we can we can do that. We can do that. You know, right away. Okay. All right. Okay. Okay. Well. Well. Welcome. We have um, we have some special guests here. Actually, at our location, we have, of course, Roberto, and we have Joe. Joe Wave. Joe is our newest affiliate store owner. And we have John and Judy from, they came down from Delaware just to pick our brains and to see what we're doing and to see what you guys do and, and to go over the, the web stores. And they're, they're actually printers themselves up in Delaware. And they're a graphic designer who lives, where do you live in Venice? Yeah. Venice, Florida. And so we have we have the new fun with Dick and Jane. <laughs> Dick and Judy and John are here, along with Stephanie, me, Roberto, and Janet. And I think Kelly is going to be joining in. I think I got an email from her. Um, Lori is going to be coming in around, um, I think, around 12 o'clock. And I don't know who else is, um, who's going to participate here today. So, okay. So, First off, I want to go over something which is which is really really important, and um, I'm going to share my screen here. Hopefully, hopefully you'll all be able to see this if I do it correctly. Yeah. Um, okay, mm -hmm. where do I go here? No, no. Sure. oh share. Okay, <laughs> good thing Roberto's here with me. Okay, 
He's never leaving, never leaving my side. <laughs> okay, and and this is called, let me do this better here, present this better here. Okay, let me, can you guys see the screen? Yes. Okay, from entrepreneur to entrepreneur, <laughs> that's gonna be the, the topic of this, of this session. <laughs> okay, so we all are partial entrepreneurs, um, and we've taken that step to become an entrepreneur. And I know that it's taken a long time for some of us, and um, I'm sure there's other things in your life that you entrepreneurate on. And but this is a big step, and I just want to say that we're. I'm proud of you. We're we're on this journey with you, and you got me. And you know that's that's um, I'm here. Okay, let me see. How do I move down here? Okay, so this. Okay, so we're going to talk about um, finding your niche um, and getting sales. I don't know if we're going to get up to the designing T-shirts and gift items part, um, creating your online store. We'll get to that. Um, if we have time to get to that, I know that Roberto is going to talk about his search engine optimization. Mm -hmm. And so we'll, we're, I want this to be more of an interactive, more of a conversation. You guys, please ask questions and participate as well. Okay. Um, okay. So finding your niche is, is super, super important when it comes to marketing your stores. And for we'll take we'll take Janet because your your store is specific, so your niche where you market is shirts for for art lovers, and then you can narrow down that niche for shirts for abstract art lovers. And your type of artwork, it could be shirts for you know like like people who are into acrylic art or oil painting, the, the, the smaller you narrow your niche down, the easier it is to find that, that customer to market to. So for example, Joe, your store is kind of wild, yeah. I think. So we would really, okay, you wanna talk about your store? Um, I'm still, still trying to get my head around all of it. Um, I, I'd like to be able to. Um, you're you're on mute. You're on uh, mute. I'm on mute. Yeah. Okay. I'd like okay. To be able to have people hear me. Uh, hmm. This could be a mess. Oh wait, here we go. How about now? Yeah. Okay. 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 Hi. Hi. So. so yeah. Yeah. It's because we're so close. So I'd, I'd like to be able to uh, be attractive to a, a lot of different groups. Um, I don't know if, if that's the best approach. So I'm, I'm still I'm still new and, and learning about this. So I, I just have this idea of uh, being free, being free, you know, to live your life your way. Um, that's where I am right now. So I'll, I'll need to focus a little more perhaps on narrowing that down. All right. Um, okay, so I'm, you know, we have some people in here. Welcome to Takia. Welcome, welcome to our group. Um, because we have some people in here, I guess the people who are in here talking, we'll have to keep them muted because we're getting that reverb sound and can't quite figure out how to, how yeah, to uh, I'm, fix that I'm right only, now. I'm only here to represent my son, Omari. He has aphasia, so this is Takia and Omari. Okay, hi there, how are you? Good. Good, good, good. Hi. So, okay, so, um, but you'll you'll take notes, and we're and we are also recording this, so you can go back to the YouTube channel to learn a little bit more. So, so Takia, what what right now we are is Takia your son? No, I'm Takia. I'm the mom, and Omari is my son. Oh, okay, okay, <laughs> okay. All right. So, um, we're talking right now about about your store, 
niching your apparel sales, who you're going to be selling to, and how to find that target market. Okay, so, so many of you already have a niche. Uh, Joe doesn't really have a niche. He's still looking for his niche. Um, I know that my niche is creative people that are looking to design their apparel. That's, that's who my niche is. Your, your niche isn't everybody. So a lot of times I go to these networking groups and they say, who are you looking for is your customer base? And it always happens. Somebody says, I'm looking for anybody that, that wants to buy a house. I'm looking for anybody that needs a mortgage. I'm looking for anybody that needs chiropractic care. Well, you're not looking for anybody because anybody doesn't need your service. Maybe it's a specific person that needs your service. You're looking for a young family that's moving into a home. You're looking for, they're, they're, you have to narrow these things down. So it's not anybody. Anybody may, any, anybody wears a t-shirt. Everybody wears t-shirts, but not everybody wears t-shirts with, with a, a coffee slogan on it. Okay. So, so that's, that's where you got to get that out of your head that it's not everybody. Yeah, everybody wears t-shirts, but not everybody wears this specific t-shirt. And that's where you narrow down your niche and think about it. It's not something that just, you know, just pops in your head and you got the right answer. Sometimes you just have to, you have to work on it and you try something. And if it doesn't work, then you try something else. So ways to find who your niches are is you can go into, um, the website Reddit, and you can go into these subreddits and you can navigate around there and you can find different groups, different different groups of people, how many people are in that group. Maybe you come up with an idea for something and you say, you know what, there's nobody that's interested in this. There's nobody at all. So I need to maybe focus on another another area to be able to promote my store, to promote my to promote my business. Another place to look is Facebook audience insight tools. And if you click on that, you can also see the size and the, and the, how many people are interested, the, the, you know, who, who is your demographic and how many people are involved in that. And then another place is, believe it or not, Wikipedia has a, has a list of hobbies because hobbies are huge, huge. It's a huge thing that people are interested in. And, and there's a whole list and it narrows it down. If you look at it, you'd be like, wow, I didn't know that people were interested in, in, in this type of, of a flower or a plant. Okay, so consider also what your interests are. What, it, what, brought you to, what brought you to be able to create this store that has this look and feel to it? And who are the people that you associate with or don't want to associate with. It could be, it could be the opposite. It could be people, I don't want to have anything to do with them. We kind of like the same things, but these are the people that you want to, that you want to be able to sit down, write it down, narrow it down and find that market and try to sell to them. And then sometimes it's okay not to listen to what everybody tells you. It's okay to trust your gut, trust your gut. Who do you think who do you think is going to wear your shirt? Who would look good in your shirt? Who's going to feel good when they're wearing something with your apparel designs on it? So there's, there's regular topics like professions, family roles, hobbies, and then there's trending things. There's, you know, what's happening today. You may want something that's going to be just current. What is happening right now? There's a lot of stuff that's happening right now. There's a lot of things that people want to put messages on their shirts, a lot of topics to talk about. Now is a great time to get current events out there into, into the world. And then of course, there's going to be stuff, you know, like spring break and Mother's Day and Father's Day, graduation. These things happen year round. We can predict that, you know, in a few months, people are going to start um, back to school, football season, tailgating, all of this stuff. Okay, next slide. Does anybody have any questions for me or any comments or? Nope. I, 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 have, I have a question, a thought. So uh -huh. your particular niche, of, it, it, it can change though, right? Like, like for example, seasonally, like you mentioned, you mentioned football season and that is a, it's a great one. We've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. this football season runs from September through basically December. Right. So that would be very 
I mean, very hot right now. Yes, yes, uh, yes. So, so yes, your niche, your, your, yeah, your, yeah, your, yeah, your niche, your, your niche, your niche can, your niche can change. It's what's on your, your, your feel and your vibe of your store is going to be the same, but you, who you're going to market to at the time. So you may have sports shirts and you may have tailgating sports shirts. So you put something out there that's going to be current for that season. So if you're, if your store is funny t-shirts or meaningful t-shirts or, you know, just message t-shirts, and then it's coming up to football season and you want to, you want to have funny t-shirts for football season, funny t-shirts for tailgating. And you want to prepare that ahead of time. So, so right now, I mean, preseason starts in August. Right now, it's a time you start thinking about it, coming up with your designs, trying to find who your market is going to be, and then you are prepared for it. You put stuff out there ahead of time, and so you're prepared for it because people still have to order the shirts, they have to get the shirts, and they have to be printed. Right, right. People are people are buying their tickets right now. They're getting their season tickets. They're getting their parking passes. They're getting, you know, they're 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 getting all into that now. So now is a good time to start with with football right now. Okay. I always say about three months back. Like I always three months ahead. Yeah, three months. So like she said, football's now. So Christmas time. I started in the summer. Um, so whatever your niche is, like think three or four months back, so then you have time to like prepare, right. and then it gives them time, so then you're not rushing it all the time, right. because you need that top selling when, before it happens. Right. So I always did like three months. Like three months, okay, also, so. Also remember that whatever content that you're gonna put together, and uh, whatever um, desire you want to rank for, right, like whatever keyword, you better start working on it. Like she says, three months, month even one month uh, before right right because you know? the keywords they don't just hit immediately as soon as you put them up there they do but especially on a new website you need to to start increasing relevance to the keyword before you can put you know so it keeps showing it, 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 people keep seeing it right mm, so google can actually make sense that you are about football before you actually launch your campaign you know so if you're, if you're just going to launch a website two days before the football game is, then there's no way you're going right. to be able to show. But if you start creating your website two months, three months before, and you start posting about football and what's happening and, you know, what the draft was and, and all these things, and when football season comes along, then you have a better chance to show up. Okay, that's the whole point. So do you encourage them, like... So if it's not any football, would you want them to put in keywords like football, touchdown, rap, like all those unique things that yeah. would help right. drive it? Yes, yeah. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Right. Of course. Right. The, right. The, the broad keyword would be football. The narrow or long tail keyword would be, would be the name of the of the team, the the purpose of the t-shirt, if it's a you know, a fan uh, um for art, you know, like fan art that the one that uh, fans actually create or you know whatever the purpose of the t-shirt and the store is but it has to be closely related to to the main broad term right being football being funny football t-shirts or being you know fan art etc mm -hmm. et right right okay yeah. okay so so the other thing about having the store is that you everything you're going to put on that store is virtual so you're not we're not we're not holding inventory you're putting an image on there and if that image isn't going to get sales you can put up another image and that's the beauty of having of having the store you have the freedom to be able to interchange the designs and without it costing anything without this you know this heavy expense of inventory okay and and does everybody understand that Okay. Okay. All right. So this is a niche. I happen to know these people so I can talk about them. And, and this is a group of store owners on a weekend trip. Okay. They're having a great time, right? They're looking, they're having a, having a good time. They're all wearing their, there's the same t-shirt. Actually, some of them are V-neck, some of them are crew neck. The ladies have some, have some uh, ladies, ladies V-neck shirts. 
so there so that niche is race car enthusiasts they are also sports car owners and they also enjoy an upscale lifestyle so these th this group of people these these people would really all fall under the these niches but what they really are they're actually they're actually salon store owners who all share in this same the same fun the same activity that they that they mm -hmm. take their race cars out and they go on these road trips and it's like like, like that um the road rally that they go on around the country and it's pretty specific now they're only going to buy nice stuff and i i just happen to know that because like i said i know them they're only going to buy nice stuff they're not going to buy cheap t-shirts they're going to spend they're going to spend 30 40 dollars on a nice shirt that they're going to be able to wear because they're driving in their lamborghinis and their maseratis so I would rather sell shirts to them than, than sell a shirt that you can go pick up at Walmart. That's not what our, that's not what we're doing here. We're, we're specific, we're premium, we're premium designers and we're premium printers. So we're printing for you guys with our best quality, with our best techniques. The software is, you know, maybe we, there are some glitches once in a while with Instagram, but it's the but it's it's fabulous software that you have control over, and you're going to present yourself as a more upscale type of a store. Mm -hmm. Okay. And and one thing that I wanted to add, if you guys notice in this image, right? Because most people they get hung up on the demographics of your audience, right? Like if you see this image, you're going to see there's. There's nobody probably older than 40 or, you know, close to 50 and not younger than 20. Okay. So most people, what they say is like, oh yeah, I, I want to, I want to target people within this demographic, you know, um, Asian American within 20 to 50, but then there's so much that is missing from that demographic. Like what Meryl was saying, there are sports cars owners or racer fanatics and, you know, they're entrepreneurs or the store owners so all that is your audience not just don't focus just on the demographics focus on the behind who are these people how you can find them because that's are you are going to actually going to be able to reach and that would give you the idea of what keywords you're going to be able to to put in your copy so that when they're searching they're going to be able to find you you know so. okay all right does anybody have any questions Roberto, you can see everybody on your screen. I can only see a couple of people on my screen. Roberto can see on his screen. So if you want to, if you have any questions, raise your hand and we'll be able to see or in the chat box. Okay. All right. Next slide. Okay. Here is another niche. Okay. So this niche is the top niche is sports. Then we narrow that down to football players. Then we actually narrow that down to professional football players. We can even narrow it down even smaller and they are defensive professional football players. So this is a small group of people because there's really not a whole bunch of them in this world, but there's a small group of people and this is a really small niche to market to, but these people, they're going to buy t-shirts, they're going to be wearing something and they like to feel as a group. So this is a group of NFL football players. They all have their own custom shirt, but they look alike because it's the same, same color on the shirt, same color shirt, just different words and actually different styles of shirts. And that you are able to do that on your store. So when you market to a group of people, you don't want to limit them with the style of shirt that they can purchase. That's up to them. Somebody, somebody may want something without sleeves and somebody else may want something with a, with long sleeves and a hood. So they can still get that. And then you, for you to offer that to them, you are, you are really putting yourself in a different level where a different playing, different playing field and um, where they can get whatever they want. That was a joke. You like that one? <laughs> and where they can get what they want and you're still selling your artwork to them. Okay. Next. Okay. 
who is your product for? Okay, who, now these are things, you, you, I don't expect you to just answer these right away. I want you to think about these and this will be posted on the YouTube channel and I can send this um, out to everybody so you can read this afterwards also. Who is your product for? Who does your product serve? What are their interests? Where do they live? Where do they congregate? What are their ages, their gender, their relationship status? All of that plays into who you are as a person and who your customer is as a person. And like I said earlier, um, your product is not for everyone. T-shirts are for everyone, but not every design on a T-shirt is for everyone. There's, there's so many times that we, I sell things to people and they come into the store and they'll look at, they'll look at, let's say this pen. And it says, actually it says color street on it. And somebody will come in that's a, let's say a landscaper and they look, they want to look at a pen. Well, if they see a pen that says color street on it, they don't even think like, they think, oh, this is a color street pen. This, they don't think that if they put their logo on it, that it's going to look like a landscaper pen, especially if it, let's say you change the color to green. So they don't think like that, but we need to think like that. We need to think that here's this product with your logo on it or with your design on it, it's going to completely change the shape, the feel, the, the, the whole vibe of that product, just what is printed on it. Okay. Yeah, next thing is your unique selling proposition. So your unique selling proposition, when you know what that is, that helps you to define again, who you're selling to. So I'm gonna just use, I'll use mine for, for example, and you guys think of your own. So your brand, so I'm gonna say Make It To You Online offers the product service apparel for creative people is a target market to design themselves. That's what Make It Tea Online does. That's that's not what your stores do. Your stores are specific stores, but Make It Tea Online is for people to design their own stuff. So when I have that in my mind, it makes it clearer to me who I'm going to market to. Now you can change your, 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 your USP, you can change that as you grow as a store owner, as you grow as a business, as you grow as a decorator, as you grow as a designer, as you grow as an entrepreneur, you can change that. Nobody's locking you into it, but it's good to have that written down, write it down, stick it on your monitor, stick it next to your bed. And it's something that you think about when you're marketing to your demographics. Okay. <clears throat> Does anybody have any questions or anybody want to have any comments? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. Who's that? Uh, hi, my name is Daniel. Sorry, uh, my, my camera is broken. So that's why you okay. probably you only see the, the picture. Okay. Uh, thank you. Uh, I, I, I got here a little bit late and I'm visually impaired. Uh, so I cannot really see what you are reading. So I just wanted to say, to say thank you in advance uh, because I understand you're going to share it later, right? By email or? Yes. Yeah, I'm going to share all of this. We're actually recording this and okay. it will be on our YouTube channel. So you'll be able to go back and listen to everything. And Daniel, you are you live locally to us, right? You're... I'm in Pompano Beach, Florida. Okay. Okay. So... So you can, we can have a meeting afterwards, or we can we can chat. I have your email address, Great. and we can talk one. We can talk one on one about anything you know, anything that you want to talk about. Great, thank okay. you so much. Thank you, thank you for being here. Thank you for being thanks. here. Thanks, no, thanks to you. Thank you. So this is Takia and Omari. Omari, um, in we in Portland. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. Uh huh. Yeah. In Portland, Oregon, and one of the things that you know, Mari um, um, started doing a lot of his own artwork, and I remember um, seeing the difference in it because he had a stroke in 2016 as a young guy, and um, started drawing and being able to use you know pencils and stuff. And I noticed like you know the just the way he was putting colors together was amazing. I took it to some people, 
So um, what he did, um, he wanted to give his nephew something for Christmas time, and he decided to take one of his art and, and up, up it, put it on a shirt, and it really looked good. And it, it basically has a message that he has because, you know, basically trying to inspire people who has, you know, um, who came down with something like him, disability, and and loves art and he was always loves art before but being able to come back and do those things so it really looks different but one of the things that we have in the problems we were having I, I luckily this week I ran into someone who has a connection to you and say oh you need to get onto this video and there's a meeting this week and that's how we got the idea of getting on but one of the things that I'm facing is because it looks so different and so artistic. It's like, what is the first step to, to protect him um, from, you know, when he put that picture out there, does he have to go through a, a, a process before to protect his, his, um, his, his brand? Um, so, okay, so, so what you're saying is if he puts his, if you, if you open up a store with us, Mm -hmm. and you put his artwork on there, what is going to stop somebody else from stealing that artwork? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. That's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a stop. Okay, okay. first, first of, all, of all, wait, why are you... No, that's me. I'm going to, I'm going to, I couldn't hear it before. Oh, okay. Are you on, what, are you on mute? Yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry about that. Um, we don't steal anybody's artwork. We we print art we, we print artwork actually for other companies, so no, no, and I'm I would not, and I I would not do that. I no, mean, I'm not I would not do that. First of all, I could be shut down if if I went ahead and and took your son's artwork and sold it and didn't and didn't. No, no, I'm not saying I'm not saying that you guys are going to do it. I'm thinking I'm, I'm I really respect what you guys are doing, but I'm thinking about. You know, outside of that realm of you, is there a way? You there, there are artists that copyright their artwork, but mm -hmm. that gets to be pretty expensive going through, you know, that type of effort for every piece that you create. Mm -hmm. um, I'm an artist also, and I haven't opted to do that, but I do know some artists that have. Mm -hmm. uh, but very few of them go to that effort to to create that copyright because it is it's really hard to defend. Somebody will make a slight change. Mm -hmm. and go, oh, it's different. Yeah, right. <laughs> there, we so can when we when we post assuming, yeah when we when we post the um, the artwork on the site, we have an option to put like a watermark over it. So, so I mean, still people take things and they. You, you can't stop people from being bad. <laughs> you, you, you can't, you can't. Um, and the way the, the way the artwork is presented on the website, it's, it's us, usually it's on a garment. So it's really hard for somebody to take something that they find on the internet and be able to print professionally from, because mm -hmm. when you put something on the website, it's a lower, it's a lower dot per image. Mm -hmm. So it's a very low resolution. So if you if somebody took that image and copied it from the website and then went to go print it themselves, they would have to enlarge it to a to a degree, and usually it would become what we call pixelated. Okay. So the quality is not there to be able to reproduce. If it's a solid line or a solid circle or something that's really super solid, people people can go on and they can trace it. Um, you can, you, there's only so much you can do unless like Janet is saying, you copyright your designs, which does get very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, you can deter them by putting a little, you know, a little registered mark on there or just doing something that's a little bit different. So, so that's a good, that's a good question. And I, and I would say that you could have, you know, people could take it. Honestly, I haven't really had to worry about that myself. I'm sure that people have taken some stuff that I've done and some stuff that other people have done. Um, that's the way the world is right now. But one second, what's Steffi? So, Steffi wants to say something. They're coming. We don't. We don't want that reverb. So she's okay. Going. So, so like my mom was saying, we're able to put watermarks over all, over everything. Yeah. 
over all the designs. Now let's say someone decides to go in and it's a pre-decorated product that's on the website. For them to then go in and it still will have the watermark all over it. But if let's say they go in, they screenshot, they do this, they do that. It's gonna be so, res so low in a resolution and so distorted that it's not going to look good whatever they print. So they're just gonna waste their money, which mm -hmm. is kind of karma. <laughs> like you don't steal stuff, so. <laughs> but yeah, we have the ability to to protect as much as we can of the artwork. That's good. That's good. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Actually, sometimes when we put watermarks over the artwork, it doesn't look that good. So that's the why we don't always do that on the website because it has that mark over it. So, but. Anyway, we, but we can. Okay, next slide here is, okay, how to get the sales. <laughs> okay, so when you, the hardest part for, a, for an artist really is marketing. A lot of artists are not marketers. So you have to answer these questions if you choose to. What would be your easiest way to market that you feel comfortable with? What what would what would you have done in the past, let's say before we had Zoom or before you had Facebook? Because a lot of people, that's really how they marketed. It was called guerrilla marketing. And you go out and you put postcards, and you put flyers, and you you talk to people and you open your mouth and you're in the supermarket and you're, you know, you're you're chatting with somebody and one on one and and um and just just one on one was really the way to market something like like a t-shirt, like a t-shirt line, a small brand. Um, so that's still the way to do it because people are getting bombarded with online marketing. It's, it doesn't hurt to get out there and talk to people. People like that. Pick up a phone and, and call somebody and have a conversation and say, you know, hey, I got this business I'm doing. Um, what do you think of it? Do you think you can maybe invite some of your friends to come to the website? One-on-one -on -one marketing to me is still one of the best ways because then people really know who you are. You're not, you're not just an ad in the newspaper. You're not just an ad online. You're a real human being that has something that you are presenting to the world. If that's easy for you, that's a great way to do it. That's a great way to start. Okay. But of course there is how, you know, the Kardashians and everybody got all their fame. It's social media. So Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter, TikTok, whatever the new thing that someone's going to come up with that some, some brainiac is going to come up with. I'm sure there's going to be something in the next year or so that we're going to hear of. There's clubs on all of these, on all of these pages. So when Facebook first started, I didn't even know about the clubs. There's clubs, there's groups, there's businesses, and there's personal. So if you have an interest in something, you can join a club. You can have a club of people that believe in Bigfoot. There's a club for people that believe in Bigfoot and they go around the country and they search for Bigfoot and there's a club about them. So there's clubs about everything. There's clubs about people that, that like to do sublimation printing. There's clubs for people that are boaters. There's clubs for people that, that like specific um, pets, like really specific pets, like Siamese cats. There's all of these clubs. That's something to join, something to look at. If you think that's your demographic, if you think that's who you're going to sell to, then you can join those clubs. Volunteer groups. Volunteer groups are huge because if you are a volunteer, you're passionate about something and passionate people want to have their message or their design on their shirt. They want to let everybody know what their passion is because they want, their, they want to do something for the greater good. So they are going to be advertising that. And when I say advertising, I don't mean just advertising like, you know, like big time advertising. I mean, they want to speak about who they are and what they have and what, they're, what, their, what their purpose is. Paid methods, of course, are Facebook ads, Postcards cost money to print postcards, but it's a it's a very inexpensive way to get your message out. And blog writers, blog writers are a great way 
to reach out to a blog writer to write about your story. So like, like, like Takia, you could write about that story. That's a great story. That's a heartwarming story that you have. And somebody is, would, be, would be thrilled to write, to write that, to write about that. Blog writers are always looking for content also. So focus on one or two of these methods or first focus on one method and see how that goes. And then you can switch over to another method, or if you have the time, you can incorporate a couple of different methods of marketing, but stick with one and see how it works for you. So I have this funny creative slogan, we want to get in your drawers. People don't forget that. You know, it's funny, it's, it's suggestive, but I do, I want to be in everybody's drawers. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. Um, understanding your products. So your products, here you see this beautiful picture of Kelly's beautiful heart on a luxurious, soft, plush, cushy blanket. And your products have added value. Okay, what adds value? And you also need to know this. We talked about this a little bit in the beginning. What adds value to your product? Is it the price? It, it could be, but maybe not. It's not always the price. Sometimes it is. So that's not the main thing. Isn't going to be the price. Um, is it the quality? Absolutely. The quality of any product that comes out of our, of our store here is going to be top quality or we're not going to put it out there. The features, there's not too many features when you're talking about apparel other than it clothes you. So the features are not really a big thing to think about. The benefits is that your the benefits are that you're going to have a great product. You're going to have great service. You're going to have a great product. You don't have to worry about it. The feeling, this is a biggie. You think about it. How do you feel when you when you are are touching a soft blanket that makes you feel good? How do you how do you feel when you put on a, a nice leather wristwatch? That's a, that's a how do you feel when you get behind us? A nice car. It always has a has a good car smell. How do you feel when you put on a beautiful cologne? How do you feel when you put on a nice T-shirt that fits you nicely, that feels soft, that that just makes you look really good? It makes you look good. It makes you feel good. That's really important. Is the feeling, because that's something that's something that you can't really you can't sell you can't sell easily. But you can create that. You can create that vibe. The solution does not. This 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 product doesn't really have. We're not solving a problem. We're not. You know. We're not. You know. It's not a cure for a disease. It's not. You know. It's not. It's not a solution like that. A service. We have a definitely have a service. We it's a convenience. It's very convenient because it's all online and everything is virtual and there's no inventory. That is super convenient. And uniqueness, you're the uniqueness. You are your ideas, your artwork, your designs, your stuff is unique. You are unique. You are the influencer. We're always looking for influencers on, on Instagram. You guys are the influencers. You got to really understand who you are and what influence you are having with your product. And, you know, we don't skimp on ink. We, we definitely use good apparel. We service our equipment and we have the most creative staff to be able to print your items. Okay, next. Okay. And a little pep talk about t-shirts. So I'm going to read this. T-shirts aren't just for casual wear. They can worn, be worn by anyone, any demographic, any culture, any size, any time of the day or night. There are articles of clothing that can reflect our personalities, interests, and identities. Because of this, selling T-shirts online has become a popular choice, especially for entrepreneurs and artists looking for a relatively inexpensive way to start a business. And the global market of custom apparel by 2025 is supposed to reach $10 billion. That's a big number. With the growth and popularity of selling t-shirts, there is definitely going to be competition. But remember, you are unique. Nobody has 
your artwork. Nobody has your mind. Nobody has your design. You are unique. And you know, look at look at look at this. Beyonce is wearing a T-shirt that says kale on it, and boom, it just you know it's a hit. So something so simple could be such a big such a a big item, and it doesn't have to be so complicated sometimes. Okay, so this is where we're able to work together to build your apparel business. So stick with us. Okay, so now I'm going to I'm going to hand it over to Roberto and he's going to talk about about traffic and he's going to talk about SEO and before before he does that I just want to show a picture of Roberto <laughs> and and his daughter Camilla who's now 15 14 close close to 14 <laughs> Stephanie me and Ed and we're hanging out um, with a bunch of t-shirts and we're smiling and we're happy <laughs> this is a while ago Ed had more hair <laughs> No, no, no. That's actually at a school. That's at a school. <laughs> and I've got that big check behind me that was on the wall that we that proudly were able to give over $7,000 this month to um, Live for Laura, Live Like Laura, and which was a, um, a campaign that was with our Make It Tea Online stores. And also we're able to give a check um, yesterday for $1,475 to make our school safe. So we're proud to be able to do that. Okay, and I'm just gonna show this last one before I let Roberto talk, cause I'm talking too much. Wearing a cool t-shirt can make you happy. <laughs> so here is an example right here. Okay, all right, Roberto, do your thing. Thank you guys. Can you make me? Um, yeah, so yes, okay. Thank you. All right. How do I do the make uh, you? What do I do here? Go ahead. Go to okay. the participant list and okay. select my name and just. Okay. All right. And then Roberto. under more, just go ahead and make host. Make host. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Go, Roberto. Okay. Uh, so first of all. There's a lot of information of what Meryl says. Um, Can everybody yeah. hear you? Yeah. Can you all hear Roberto? Well, I can hear you. Yes. yes. Okay, okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. So yes. last month, obviously, every month we're building upon the previous one, right? So I'm going to go, go ahead and do the the, uh, the recap, and then we're gonna go into the results from our last workshop and how we're doing um, as far as the page optimization, the website optimization, traffic optimization, SEO on Momento, Momento Mori Live, okay? So basically recapping, you know, the three-step success formula, create a great product, brand or message, put them in front of the right people and give them a, a, and give them a, a, a great reason to buy it, you know? So why? Because messaging is very important and everything goes around messaging because messaging, the right messaging is gonna be able, it's gonna allow you to be in front of the right people. And then if you have the right message, buying is not gonna be, you're not, it's not gonna feel like selling, it's gonna be about presenting the right product to the right person, right? And there's not gonna be a sell, just the right person is just gonna see your, your product and they're gonna be able to, to buy it, to, to get it from your website. So, but everything starts with clarity, right? So we went into keywords and the two different types of keywords, like on our previous example, football, right? Being a very broad term, Right, and we also found ways to how to measure this, because if I go to to Google and I look for football, right, this number is going to tell me how many how many websites actually talk about this. Okay, but what about if I put football 
little league. No, what would be uh, a put, school? Put NFL football. Okay. Oh, sorry. I put school ball. Okay. So, okay. So that's the right number. Which oh, is a big number. <laughs> a big number. Okay. But what about if we do a school teams, right? So, which is a good. Or you could do flag football. Right. So the number actually just decreases slightly, mm -hmm. right? So our goal is to find the definition that we want to focus on, that this number, it gets to the hundreds of thousands, not the millions or the hundred millions, right? Because then it's going to be almost impossible, not impossible, because nothing is impossible, but it's going to be more challenging to write, right? So the more, the, the more you can make this a long talk you were like, you see the suggestions right under Coral, Coral Springs High School football. Okay. Now we're in into the millions of pages, but it's not a crazy amount. So this would be a, a keyword that we can actually go, go ahead and create content and start ranking. Now I have software that I actually share on my on my presentation that you have links to that shows me how many people actually search for this in a monthly average. Okay, this number is the, the last 12 month average on Google searches. And this is provided by Google, just that this software presents to me on, on Google itself. Okay, so like uh, Mara was saying, okay, I start putting ideas together, there's not a one simple formula, but everything starts with research. So if you do funny t-shirts, right? Um, obviously it's gonna be a, then again, it's a huge, it's a huge number. But what about for dentists, <laughs> right? So now I just dropped down tremendously. Wow. What about Florida? Okay, now this is a number that you can go after. Okay, now don't be intimidated or don't be discouraged by this number because then now you're gonna have to find an angle, okay, in order to rank for this keyword and in order to create content that it can be found for you. Okay, so um, for this one, I would actually start writing about dentists in Florida, funny things that happen on dentistry in Florida, right? Like things that are unique to dentistry in Florida, like wearing a gown in the middle, in the middle of a, you know, um, of a hot day or something like that. So there's there's different things that you can do, right? And then you can uh, obviously, if you're going into this niche, it would be best if you start looking for information or talk to dentists that you know and find out things that are funny. So and create t-shirts around it. So it's not just about the t-shirt; it's about having a well-rounded knowledge about your um, industry, about the niche that you wanna rank for, the niche that you wanna serve, right? Because uh, you need to put the horse prior to the cart. You have to go ahead and, and, and see why or who's gonna find it, right? And then talk about things that they would be talking about so that when they're searching for those topics, they're gonna be able to find you or that you're gonna be most likely to to show on, on Google. Okay, so I don't wanna make this too long, but the difference between keywords, the broad terms and the long terms, okay? The broader, the, the more difficult, the long term, less difficult to write, okay? And then we saw uh, a tool that is by Neil Patel, right? You just go to this website and it's gonna show you the same numbers that I show you right now, okay? Whenever you actually look for a topic, it's going to give you the search volume, SEO difficulty, and um, cost per click. The cost per click, just have in mind that if anybody spends money on getting clicks from this keyword, it's because it's profitable. So the most profitable, the more competition there is. Okay. So definitely something to look at. Okay. Um, the less search volume, right, um, and the less SEO difficulty, the easier to rank. But obviously, have in mind, don't rank just for any keyword. Uh, I think that the 
the minimum that we said it was about 100 searches a month, okay? So in the in that example for funny t-shirts dentist, maybe I would take out Florida and try to rank just for uh, funny t-shirts dentist, okay? Or funny t-shirts for dentists. And this is a more breaking down uh, results on the on this topic and this this is the broad term and this is uh, the long term, okay? Um, then how you find your keywords, you go ahead and you put your seed keyword on Google and you start searching for how much competition it has. Okay, you use your suggest, which is the tool that I gave you earlier. And then you, can, uh, you compare against the Google ranking competitors, right? And then select your winners. And that's when you can focus on, the, on, on a niche, right? Because just to tie the two concepts, the niche for me is just the keyword that I'm going after, the one that um, is very specific to the people that I'm serving, right? So piggybacking on what Merrill was saying is very important, first of all, to know who you're serving and then work on, work down from there until you find your, your right keyword, okay? Um, then a couple, this is more on the social media content framework, okay? Um, all these sessions are on our previous uh, recording, so you're welcome to, to watch. Okay, I gave three tools that you can use. Okay, Google, Quora, uh, and Answer the Public. These are great tools to find content. Now, once you already have the niche and the, and the keyword, you start creating the content to topics that actually are gonna be about your, your main keyword, and then you start ranking from there, okay? So, Google News, that's one of the, the tools. The other one is Answer the Public, and then we have Quora. Okay, I explained how, how to use each individual one, but basically it's just do a search. Everything starts with a search. Once you selected the keyword, or if you have a notion of the keywords that you wanna select, it's always best to start searching for content to see if you can find um, that other people like it. Like the example that Meryl gave about the groups is perfect because you might have an idea in your head, but unless you find that other people do search for it using the tools that I gave you and other people do congregate on Facebook groups, now you have a niche that you can sell to, right? Prior to that, you have a great idea. Now you develop that idea into a keyword and then finding the people through a group. So this is how it's, it's starting to, to have shape. Okay, um, answer the public. This is just a, a tool that you can go and put your main keyword or your long tail keyword and start getting content and start developing content from those ideas. Okay. Uh, can we can we show them in the store, one of the stores, how yeah. we actually add the keywords? Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, whenever you're ready. You can... So the anatomy of the surf, right? We went over this last time. You start with a with a search, then it gives you the number of of people that actually have that uh, keyword on on the page. Doesn't mean that it's only about that, but there is that is actually is present on the page. Then you have ads. Then you have the search results. Okay, and that's what most people don't realize that the first spots on Google they always pay for. It. Okay, somebody else is paying in order to to rank there. Okay, so I, I shouldn't say rank, to show up there. Ranking is only organic, okay? So knowing that, we're gonna go ahead and, and see where we can change this on the website. Okay, so applying this to your store. Now we have Momento, Momento Mori, right? And this is the back end. We are on the main page. And last time we actually did a couple of changes on, on the store itself. Uh, we added Momento Mori, right? Uh, the journey starts here. Unfortunately, this is an image, so Google Google doesn't read images, or they do, but um, for all intents and purposes, um, we're actually, instead of just showing the image, we're gonna go click on the image, and then under advanced. So this is this is in your store, guys. This is This is actually, when you go into your store, and you go to edit the website, 
there are the tabs on the left hand side mm -hmm. and those tabs show you how to make changes to the front end of your store which you can do i mean we have done that for most of you um, but it's important for you guys to understand that you can actually do this as well mm -hmm. so so one of the things um changing your content okay to go um to give importance to the to the keyword that you want to write for okay in this particular case it's about momentum more which is a concept to be present and to live the moment right so that's going to be our main keyword that's going to be that's basically going to be the first word that shows on the website uh, other than the logo and the menu which are universal um items on the page okay but the content on the page it starts from here down okay so this is going to be momentum more the journey starts here why because you're enticing them to to start shopping you know you're enticing them you're welcoming you're giving a clear message of what this page is about momentum more that's why clarity is key once you identify your your keyword that's the first thing that you want people to to see okay now the structure of the page is almost like an essay okay google if, if google takes a look at your page the only thing that they're gonna see is this okay this is what google see which is code okay now presented to us we see this okay but each of these um content has a, a HTML tag. Okay, I don't want to get too technical, but basically this is almost like um, um, which I have again. Okay, which is this. Okay, so the the document title is an H1. It's the the most important um, part on the website as far as Google. Okay, and that's why I said it's almost like an essay. You put your your title. You put your first topic, second topic, and then you start breaking down the information based on the structure, right? What Google sees is HTML tags. So the, the content, the, the main title is H1. Your subtopics or your, you know, um, your headings, heading two, heading three, are gonna be H2, it's H3, and then the paragraph is just gonna be text. In, in, the, in the website, you actually have the ability to label which which yeah. topics you want as H1, H2, H3. The software allows you exactly. to to say that. We can you can actually show them that, I guess. Yes. Okay. So you see here under heading. If I go here um, design, you see how I'm, I'm labeling it H1 because it's my main keyword. Okay. This one is also a heading. Okay. And I'm also labeling it. This one, this one is actually H three. Okay. Because you don't you don't want everything on your home page to be marked as H one. God, Google doesn't like that. <laughs> yeah, and and here's one thing that most people miss, and they do it without knowing. Because most websites, including Deco Network, they give different sizes and design elements to the different headings. So because H one is the biggest, and the more the you know the bolder and the biggest and and the one that calls more, more attention, people tend to use it all over the website. But then you end up with, with a structure that is not clear to Google. So when Google are, arrives to your page and you have H1 here and H1 here and H1 here, they're going to say, OK, what's this website about? We don't really understand. And they're going to try to make sense of your website, but by chance, not because you gave it in a structured way. OK, I hope it makes sense. So if I. You should only have one H1, period. H2s are subtopics, okay? So if this is momentum mori, right, then what I need is, this one is H3 because it's not really a subtopic, it's almost like an invite, okay? But this one is because this is my subheading and it's a long subheading, but it has everything that we need to tell the audience, okay? All momentum more graphic t-shirts, um, you know, products can be customized for your favorite colors and, and print, you know. So 
this and an H2 because it has a very clear message that we want to present and we want Google to take notice of this. That's why it's an H2. This content is more important than the journey starts here. And even though the size might be bigger here, we still deem this an H3 because it's not that important. The important are Momento Mori, which is our main keyword. And then we have this, which is a very clear uh, paragraph or sentence that we need to, to have Google take notice of because it explains what the website is about, okay? And then you go through each of the uh, products, okay? Which when you click on them, you go to a different page and you go into a whole different structure, okay? Where the, where the most important aspect of this would be the, the, the title of the, of the product, okay? So going back to the original thing that I wanted to show you is Google doesn't actually read images, okay? That's why when you import an image, yes, this is text on an image. So it's basically just a picture of text, but Google wouldn't know what it, what it means unless you tell, unless you tell Google it, what it means. And the only way to do it is to add, in this case, I added everything that it says on text. I added here on the, sorry, here on the alt tag, okay? So alt tags are basically what Google reads because it's part of the code of the image, okay? So if you have images that mean something important, then especially if they're text, because you want to, you know, enhance how the text looks and maybe this this font is not available for you just to uh, type it and you want to create an image, the best thing is to to actually have an alt tag that it, that it has the whole text on the image. This way Google would know what this image is about and what it says. Otherwise, you're leaving it to chance. Does anybody have any questions for Roberto at this point? No? So I have a question. Okay. Um, so like things like that, would we be able to get support like, you know, in terms of building that until we kind of really got, get um, um, more proficient in it? So, yeah, so, that, so that's one of the reasons why we do this class is to, is to explain to you. Now, I, I honestly don't expect everybody to understand what, what or how to do it. It's not something that's simple to people. Mm -hmm. It's something that's simple to Roberto. <laughs> it's, mm -hmm. it's not so simple to me either. It's just something of a, a learning thing. Um, so I, so the answer, when we, when we build the stores with you, mm -hmm. we, we go over this and we, we want you to sell. We want you to sell products. So we're gonna do everything we can to help you and to show you um, the reason that we're, like I said, the reason we're doing this class is you, you may have somebody, you may have a friend or somebody that, or, that you work with or whatever that wants to help you to promote your store. Mm -hmm. And there are so many options that you have in your store to be able to do this on your own that you know, we're not going to stop you. I'm not going to stop you from, from building your own SEO, or if you want to have Roberto do your SEO for you, or, you know, we're, we want you to, we want you to sell. We want you to get your name out there. We want, we want Google to know that your site is relevant. So, so the answer is we will help you as, as much as we humanly possibly can. Okay. The other answer just to, to add to that is Definitely we want you to do this and we want you to be proficient on it. And that's why we really do this, uh, you know, talks. And I think if you take the time and you see, and that's why we're, we're growing from little to, to more, right? We're building up on the previous one and the previous one and the previous one. And if you just came in to this one, then I encourage you to watch the previous ones because I actually did show how to add this, how to change this. I mean, I can show you now again, but definitely it's gonna be, there's about how many have we done so far? Five? This is our fourth, this is our fourth, fourth one, yeah. Fourth right. one. January, so February, March, hours April. Of content that you should <laughs> right. watch because we'll go through this in detail. Okay. The easiest way is when you when you get a store from Merrill, right? From 
uh, design on Deco Network, you're going to have this. You're going to have this, this, this page, right? That is going to look similar. But then what you need to do is having your main keyword, which is not something that we're going to be able to do for you. That's why we're showing you and teaching you how you can find it and how you can do the research and how you monitor which one has uh, search volume and which one doesn't so that you can uh, separate a good idea versus finding a niche, right? Because there's a million great ideas, but most often than not, I see people that spend a lot of time optimizing for something that no one searches. That's why I teach you how to find if people actually search for that so that a great idea becomes something profitable for you, okay? Once you have your keyword and you want to add it to the page, you can go ahead and under widgets, just drop a, a heading, right? And I think we did this last time. So you just drop it here and you have to edit it under design and then you go to advanced, sorry, design and you select one and now you put your main keyword here, right? The mechanics of it are always the same, right? You drop a widget, you change, you give the header. Now, how it looks and how exactly you want to look, that's, you know, based on, on preference. You know, I want it to be bigger, I want it to be uh, smaller, I want it to be a different color. And the good thing is that once you get around the software, it's always, it's not going to change. So you can do this over and over and over on all your pages, okay? And this is why we do what we do because I want you to to learn how to do it because obviously it would be a much more value if so you are let, able let's to. Show, let's show them where the pages are. Okay. Okay, so. Here. These are all the pages that actually exist on the, on, on the store. So on the upper left-hand side of your home page, if you click on pages, you see the list, the list of all the pages. So one page is designs, one page is products. You, if you don't want to have your products, you don't want to show that, you you just unclick the bottom part here where it says show in menu at the bottom so that the customer can't see those those things. We have stock graphics that that most people would not want on their store, like Janet or or Kelly or, or they don't want the stock graphics on their store. They want only their graphics on the store. So I'll go to product, right? Go to product, go to designs. All and of these I are different want, pages. If I don't want to show this, then I go ahead. Here. Then you, then you Actually, unclick. It's not showing. Oh, it's so not showing there. Yeah, it's not showing yeah. in, the, in the top menu. Right, in the top menu. Right. Yeah. right, right, right. And then you go through each individual page and find those, those texts that you want to enhance and you just click under page title settings, and now you go into design, and it's the H1, okay? So designs, and you have all the designs here. Those are, those are all the designs that are, that are on the apparel yeah. that is in that store. Now that store specifically has decorated products. So, so a, the, the customer can't go in and grab that design and put it on something else. They have to go into the decorated products that were set up. And with the decorated products, we have we made them certain price points so that that this was the correct price for this store owner mm -hmm. that she wanted to sell her products at. Mm -hmm. And you can we can create that, we can change that. And here's here's one thing, right? Um yeah. this is important. two of the most important pages that you're gonna have to um customize for ranking is your about page. Well, first of all, your home page, because that's that's the first thing that Google sees, which is the most important thing, right? Your about page, which is which gives you an opportunity to tell people that arrive here what this website is about, and obviously also to Google, but most important to, to people, right? So what is Momentum Mori? Teach them educate them a little bit if you need to about what this website is, why Momentum Mori is important, right? Who the believer, uh, believers are, the symbolism and the genesis, right? These are things that have been deemed to be important. That's why they're here. In your case, could be about 
you know, funny issues for dentists. So dentists, you know, it's a very difficult profession, you know, uh, um, having time to laugh is important for dentists and serving the, the dental community is important because, you know, these are people that are always under stress, blah, 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 with now with COVID, all kinds of things that you can talk about, but you give the purpose to the page, why the pages exist. You know, in the case of football, you know, we're, we're looking for the fans. We're looking for the fans that have, um, you know, to have a, a really nice experience. We are sharing fine art, you know, whatever the, the whole purpose of the page is, should be on your about, about page. Okay, then obviously that contact page should be the easiest way that they can get in contact with you. Well, they get in contact with us there. With them. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. Right, right. So, so when when with your stores, I mean, you're not printing your stuff, so I don't. So it's not really a good idea for your customers to be calling you if there's if they have a question or whatever. We have Stephanie, our queen of customer care, who is our extraordinary extraordinary queen of customer care. And um, we will be the ones dealing with your customers. So you just, you market your store and you, you come up with your designs and you come up with, with your vibe for your store. And we will take all that other responsibility off of mm -hmm. you because we can handle it. We don't, we get the information directly from your customer. If there's a problem, a question, they want to check tracking and it doesn't make sense for them to call you. And then you've got to call me and then we got to go back and, you know, the whole, the whole thing so we we can we can handle that mm -hmm. now in, in Lori's page which is Momento Mori one thing that she did was she started creating pages within the platform and use them as blog okay meaning that she's writing articles within the page within a particular page that she called blog okay then on the last session I went ahead and and I added her website into Google meaning I went ahead and submitted the page and created a link between Google and her page by verifying the uh, the ownership of the page. Okay, so here's Momentum More Alive. So this is basically like looking at the back end of Google, okay, and finding out what Google thinks and, and why they rank you the way they do. Okay, this is the one single, besides analytics, this is the one place where you can really tell what Google actually makes sense of your website, okay? So after adding her, that's why we only have about one month of data, right? But you see how many clicks she got? She got actually four clicks, okay? If you wanna see more information, you open here. And this is actually how many times did Momentum Mori actually made it into Google was 134, but of those 134, only four people clicked. And this is one of the things why I always say, your website should make sense to Google and definitely should be focused on to the customer because this number is how many times Google has shown the website, but this number shows how many people actually click. So at the end of the day, we can always show too many times, but if it, the description of the site or the copy of the site or the text on the site doesn't make sense to a user, they're not gonna click on it, right? Um, one of the examples I always give is, if everybody on your niche gives um, free shipping and you're not, and you're ranking the top 10, the description is gonna say free shipping, free shipping, free shipping, and you're not, no one is gonna click on your page, regardless whether you rank on the top 10 or not, okay? So it has to be focused on to what the customer needs rather than just what the website is. Okay, so make it competitive, make it enticing uh, and be at par with the other competitors. Okay, so here the website actually show 134 times. It only had four clicks. And this was just by linking the page to Google, not, and obviously changing a little bit the, the heading, the head, um, the H1, and a little bit of the text on the on the page. But this is the beginning, okay? And now, one step further, now we can actually see what were the things that actually made the website appear on Google, okay? And these are the keywords that the website is, is 
is being shown for. <laughs> this one is actually funny. Memento Mori alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> hey, my, there might be a niche there. You don't know. Right, right. Okay, that's why you have to separate what you think about your page and what Google thinks about your page. If the two coincide, then it's optimized. If the two are completely off, then you need to work into guiding Google to make sense as you do of your page. Okay, so and here's the thing, right? Five five times was this website shown for Momentum Mori blog. Okay, and here, if you go and says average position, okay, it's actually going to show. It was shown five times. It was clicked one and it was in 14th position, okay? And this is just the average. It's not the, the actual position because we all know that if you ever wanna hide a dead body, you put it on the second page of Google. <laughs> so 14th position wouldn't actually make any clicks, okay? But the average probably was from seven to 14, from seven to 20, and that's why it gives you 14, okay? But what I wanna, uh, what I want to make sure that you guys understand is that how many times Google actually show your page and how many people actually click on your page is a whole different, you know, it's a whole different game. Okay. Now, the CTR is just the division between one over the other. Okay. And this tells Google that, okay, on Thursday, April 8th, Momentum Mori blog had a CTR of 20%. So, however many times it was shown, it actually 20% of them were clicks. Okay. And this is just how Google actually uh, checks relevance on your page because if it's shown, and the way I always say is if your website is shown um, a thousand times and three people click, it's not relevant. Okay. If, it, if your CTR is lower than 10, 20, 30%, it's not really that optimized for that keyword. Okay. So Momentum Mori blog, I know is optimized because out of a hundred times 20 show, out of 10 times two click, okay? So this is one term that she con should continue optimizing for because they already got her one visit. So in the next weeks, month, it would get her traffic. So she's already ranking for something that is highly relevant for her that has good CTR and that is already producing traffic. Not a lot because, you know, it's just one click, but it was shown five times. Can I ask you a question, Roberta? Sure. So, okay, so um, some of you have blogs that are off the website and um, Deco Network doesn't really have a blog platform, but we kind of faked it on this one. And I feel that, that we did a good job faking it by by adding these the blogs like this, yeah, we we did yeah. we did a workaround to uh, to get this going. So my question for Roberto, like I know that that Kelly and and actually our blog is actually off the site. We have a WordPress site. Kelly has a blog um, on another site, and we've linked it to this site. So it, is it better for us to take our blogs and to put them onto the pages of the site like we're doing? like are, are faking it. For sure. Okay. Okay, and the reason why is because this is the the address of, of the website, right? So actually from here onward, okay. Momento Mori Live is the actual name for the domain, right? The domain of the website. In our case, if you go to our blog, it's blog that make it the this address already tells me that it's a separate website altogether. It's not treated as Megathy Online. It's a blog or the subdomain blog into Megathy Online. Okay, so even though we have a lot of good content here, right? Um, and originally we did this because it allows us to, to have links back to Megathy. So we're linking or yeah, we're linking good content that is highly relevant to our niche into Megathy Online by a lot of these um, blog posts actually link back to Megathy Online. Okay, and that's how we're 
for linking the relevance between the blog post and the Megatheon name. But it would be best if the domain name would be just Megatheon line that blog. Or have both? Okay. Have both? No. No, because then now you're confusing Google. Like, so which one is the, mm. which one do I give credit? Because only one page should rank on Google. And if you have more than one page for the same content, it's not, it's going to choose either one or the other, mm -hmm. or you're competing against yourself. Okay. And now you're confused. Okay. Yes, questions. Does anybody, does anybody have any questions for Roberto? Yeah, please. I don't. Do you guys have questions for Roberto? We have a lot of questions. We got, we, we got the peanut gallery here with a lot of questions. I can talk about this all day, but I don't want to go over things that, you know, are not clear. And obviously you can always, and, and one of the things that I did guys, okay, just for you to, uh, for you to know, this is actually, it's evergreen and it's going to continue growing the presentation and all the tools that I share with you guys, the links are here. Okay. And the whole content is here. So please use it, you know, uh, I'm making this available for you guys. And obviously you have the, the links to the YouTube channel. So you can see the things that we go over on this content, right? And if you have questions, bring them next month. I'll be happy to answer. If you have questions now, I'll be happy to answer. If you guys want want me to work on another page all the momentum more, you just bring it up because <laughs> we have a month between now and, and our next session so that I can review it and maybe have some correspondence with you and tell you this is what we can do. So, and this group is, we're not talking about hundreds of people. So it's intimate enough for me for us to to work together because at the end of the at the end of the day what i want is within you know three four months six months to see your pages starting to get traffic to start and, and for you to be able to do it you know and if you need extra help i'm always available you know but this is why we put this content together for you guys okay okay so i'm going to talk about i'm going to talk about the back end of the store right now i'm going to go over that um, with everybody. Does anybody have any specific questions that I know that in the beginning, Janet was asking about changing out her, her picture on the, the front end of the website on her homepage. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, you got to thank you from Daniel. Um, does anybody have any questions that I can answer before I just go back in and just do my thing and show you the back end of the website? No questions? Okay. All right. Uh, sorry. So, Actually, I wanted to, to mention something, um, just piggybacking of, of what uh, Meryl said earlier. One of the fastest way to get your website in front of your customers is find whoever is already in front of, in front of the audience that you want to be in, and then have them show your t-shirt. Meaning, if you're, um, if you're going after football, professional football players, right? find an influencer that already does have an audience that, that is, focusing, is focusing on to those people and get on the phone, send them a message through WhatsApp or not WhatsApp, but through Instagram, through Facebook and say, hey, I love your channel. I love your, your group. I love your whatever it is that they're doing, their YouTube, their Pinterest, uh, you know, and say, I would be delighted if you can wear one of my T-shirts the next time or I want to send you a free T-shirt. And initiate conversation because if they have a million followers, guess what? You're an instance of success on a niche that is very specific. Okay. Obviously, they negotiate. You know, some people they undervalue their 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 their, their power. You know, like some of them won't charge you anything. Obviously, if they want to charge you thousands of dollars, it would be up to you to decide. But Many of these, they do it for hobbies. You know, they, they're not even looking for money. So if you give them a nice t-shirt that they can wear and they just mention where they got it, now you have a thousand people that saw them wearing this t-shirt or a million people. And they would most likely say, hey, I got it in Momentum Mori, you know, life.com. And boom, now you're in front of these people. They know where you are and you will get sell. So it's a little bit of both because one thing that, that we need to remember is that Google, okay, it's always that the chicken of the egg. Google doesn't want to give you 
traffic unless it knows that you're worth the traffic. And in order for them to know that it's worth, that you're worth the traffic, they wanna see traffic <laughs> coming to your page, okay? So, so if they're gonna give you 10 people, okay, or a thousand people, you should always start with creating your own traffic. Send emails, tell people visit my website, contact people on Facebook, tell them to visit your website. If they stay long enough, uh, Google is gonna make notice that there were 100 people on your website and they all liked it, they all stayed. So it is highly relevant. Now let me send traffic, okay? And, and that's how, how it really works, okay? They, they wanna see traffic in order to send you traffic. So that's why you always start with a paid campaign, with a social media campaign, with an email campaign, with a word of mouth campaign, prior even trying to rank, okay? And that's just the truth. So, and I know it's a process. So, so that what Roberto was saying would be awesome if you could actually get some type of influencer to wear your stuff. I, I mean, I've been trying to do that for a long time and sometimes people do. So the e easiest way to do it is actually to start, start locally, start, start with a local celebrity in town, your local mayor, your local uh, store owner, restaurant owners, they just think that they're the greatest people in the world. You, if you give some to a restaurant owner, they, because they are serving you food and you need food to, to sustain life. So restaurant owners are great people to, to give your stuff to. And they are seeing more people probably than anybody else these days. So I would say start local with that. That would be a, a great opportunity to do. Um, one of our affiliate stores, Make Our School Safe, has really done that. And um, I mean, we've got the the actors from the TV show SWAT that are actually wearing Make Our School Safe shirts. They're doing public service announcements. So getting, so what Roberto's saying is true. You can you can you can nudge people and get them to to wear your stuff. And eventually somebody's gonna say, hey, I like this and do it. Uh, one of the things that, that we actually did in, in the office here was, um, and is Kelly, she's still on or not, but we did um, a, a little TikTok video where we were all wearing each other's t-shirts. We were all wearing each other's artwork and it was fun because we were just a big group of people and we were helping to support each other. And that's one thing that I want all of us to do here in this group is to support each other. So um, I like your art, I wear your art, you wear my art. <laughs> And we all help each other out because that's kind of what, you know, togetherness is is the way to grow and the way to um, I, that's that's my that's my way to, to do things. That's what I would like to do. So, I'd like to share that that thought process with you guys also. So, okay, let's go. I'm going to go into the back end of the site. We have we have like 20 minutes. Um, let me see here. Let me. How do I go back to my screen? Yeah, okay okay make you host okay make me host again okay yeah. okay am i host now okay yes. all right so now i'm going to share my screen let me go into i'm going to go into stephanie's store here let me go back here wait okay i will get this one of these days <laughs> okay wait i'm trying to get it back into Okay. Here. All right. Here we go. All right. Different button. Okay. No. Okay. All right. I'm not sharing my screen yet, but. Okay. Okay. Wait a second. I'm going to log in here. Okay. And. I'm not logging in. While I'm logging in, I want um, the new people to write down our office phone number, or which is 954-753-7287. Um, I'll also email you guys. And okay, so here we are in the back end. Let me get to share the screen here. Wait, I don't know how I do this. Wait. Go back to Go back here, share open. screen, yeah. okay, share. share. Okay. All right. So this is the back end of, of how I see all of your stores. 
um, I'm going to go into I'm going to go into um, Stephanie's store here. So I'm going to go into websites, and Stephanie's store is uniquely Steffi because she's not going to mind if I mess up the back end of her store. <laughs> Okay, and I'm going to manage her store. Okay, so all of you who have stores or who are going to have stores, you all see you all see up to here where this administration. You don't see the administration. That's where that's where I see, and you guys don't see. But you see, you've got your dashboard, you've got your edit website, you've got the price settings, you have your store designs. You have your decorated products, you have your orders, you have your customers, you have your domain settings, your SEO tools, your marketing and sales tools, designer settings, your store configuration, and your commissions. I don't think you've got your API settings. Okay. Do they? I, anyway. Okay. So they do. Okay. All right. So so what's, in, what's important here are a lot of the store owners will ask me, about they about the orders um, they want they don't even realize that they can actually go in here and click under orders and see who placed the order and what the commission is on that order so you can go back in here because they'll people will call me and say you know can you tell me what the commission was, was this or can you tell me how many people placed orders well you get an email for every order that is placed no, you don't get a full, a full um, view of everything. You don't. I don't know if you see the coupon codes. Or so you have certain limitations on the emails that you get, but you can go into the back end of your store and you can get all this information. So, so we see here. This is the order number. So when somebody says, "Oh, was this order shipped?" Whatever, it says it right back here that this order was shipped. So we get that question a lot. Can you tell me if an order is ready or if an order has been shipped? So, so Kelly, this is, this is for you. You go back here into your orders and you can actually see that this person's order was marked shipped, which means that we have completed the order and it's either in the mail or it's here for in-store pickup. And you see the date that it was processed. Here is the date that it was shipped. And so if the customer who is a friend of yours who doesn't call us and says, you know, hey, how come I didn't get my stuff? You can go in the back end and say, hey, it's there at the store or, or you know, Merrill shipped it on April 7th. So it takes a few days to get in the mail and, and to get to the customer. And this is where the commission is on that one particular order. Okay, so there's here are all the names here of the people that have ordered. And then you can also see under marketing and sales tools, who signed up for a for the mailing list. So export the newsletter addresses and we'll see. So all of these people here um, signed up. Wow, all these people signed up to be on Stephanie's mailing list, which is great. <laughs> so she has all of these people that she can now market to. She can send them individual emails. She can do MailChimp. She can do Emma, constant contact, whatever she wants. She has all of these email addresses that they have all agreed to receive mail from her. So they can't complain. And that's a great marketing tool right there that you have in your back end. Okay. Is there a place where it allows you to put either UPS or FedEx tracking on when you complete an order on that line at all? So, so for the for the store owner to see that, you mean? Yeah, so there, just, yes. Yes. Okay. So, so when we when we ship an order, that the question was, is there a place to put UPS tracking? So, when we ship an order, that customer is emailed their tracking information. The customer gets when when the order is shipped. We we actually use stamps.com, and um and we and UPS, and we put that tracking number in there. So your customer will get that information. Now on our end, as the main store owner, we can actually see if the customer opened up their email or not. 
to see that. And many, many of them, they don't open up their email and they don't know. And then they call. And that does happen. You can't stop people from, you know, not opening their email. You know, but you can say, we sent you an email on this date. You, some people open it and still don't realize that their tracking is in there. <laughs> that happens quite a bit. Okay, so yes, there, we see it as a store owner sees it. I don't know if the affiliate store owners can see the tracking, but let's let's look and see. Actually, that's a good question. Let's look and. Why I ask is if, but as a store owner, I would even like if I knew you completed it, mm -hmm. I could even like do a shout out to them saying, "Hey, just to let you know, here's the tracking. You know, more of a personal one-on-one -on -one touch of here's the tracking and." You know, you'll get an email, but I wanted to give you a heads up of shipping. Oh, uh, okay. So that's, that's why I was just wondering. Yeah. Okay. So, so that's a good. So let's let's look here. Let's go back to Steppy's store to the orders. And so the question was, can U.S. store owners be able to see what the tracking is? So here, so let's view. Let, let's view this one because this one I know was was a shipped, not an in-store pickup. Okay. So here it is, and. Here's the product, this, here's all this stuff, and the shipping, the shipping cost. And no, the, you, you do not see, the, the affiliate store owner does not see the tracking. Okay, but that would be a good thing to talk to our software um, developers about to see if they can add that information for the affiliate store owners. They probably don't have that in there because of, I don't know, maybe security reasons of using tracking numbers. I don't, or using account numbers that, so that might be, that might be why, but, um, but anyway, so no, you can't see, but we can see. So we know when the tracking is okay. And you do, you do see that it was shipped. The date it was processed and the date it was shipped. Okay. All right. So let's start here with your can dashboard. I, can I ask a question? Yes. So I didn't realize that you all, that there was a sign up option for a newsletter. Um, and I saw on the side where it said MailChimp integration. Mm -hmm. So on my, on my art website, I, I have a newsletter sign up and a MailChimp account. So there, that way I can, I can sync the two. Mm -hmm. Yes, you can, you can download your, your, your list and yeah. you can import that into your other, your other, um, your mail, your mailing account. Okay. If that's Is the, cause on the way on the, the make a T website, there's not a pop-up that comes up that people are agreeing. So somewhere along the line in the order process, somebody's agreeing to the newsletter. Is that how it works on your, yeah, when, when they sign up to, when they, when they buy something, when they sign right. up, they, there is a box there, you know, do you want to okay. receive mail from us? Okay. And so they've either clicked it or they haven't clicked it. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you could also send out emails to the people, all the people have ordered from you and say, you know, would you like to, you know, would you like to subscribe to the mailing list? Right. If you wanted to do that too. If you see that people aren't doing that and maybe people aren't doing it, but doesn't mean that they don't want to hear from you. Right. So you can, you can still do that. Okay. I think you can't, I think you can't do it like as a whole group because that's called, that's like spamming them, but you know, but, you, once, but the way in my understanding, once they've agreed to be on my mailing list, then that's yes. The yes. Consent yes. to give a group email from my, from my store. Right. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. You. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. So another thing is Kelly and I are meeting on Monday. So if anybody wants to set aside time, just let me know. I mean, we scheduled a time. She's going to come in. We're going to talk about marketing stuff. And we're going to talk about some of her designs and, and some new things for her. So we are, we're open to all of that. We are always open to all of that. So just, you know, feel free to reach out to, to us. Okay. All right. So, so let's, so we're back here on the back of Steffi's store. Steffi doesn't know we're in the back of her store. I'm using her store as an example here. And this is her dashboard. These are her orders. 
and you know this is a a part-time thing for her because she's here full-time but you know here she is making a little extra money okay so so she's you know she's getting some you know some you know some commission checks every month which is pretty good as an additional in addition to her income she's got my grandson to feed <laughs> Okay, so here we now you have where you can edit the website. And if you're a Roberto type, you can do some of your custom <laughs> custom HTML and, and CSS here. Um, and then here you can click on your website pages. This is where we were when we were talking about the Memento Mori site. Your website pages. <clears throat> this brings you to the front end of your website. Now you see that the website that you were looking at before, Memento Mori, how that looked, and Stephanie's website looks completely different. But it basically still is under these template formats that you have the ability to, to choose and create. Here's her logo up here, and then here are her different categories. So one of them is William Syndrome, because my grandson has a disability, William Syndrome, and that's something that, that is, Steffi is passionate about. And then she has her funny stuff and then little nuggets and then sports. And her, her demographic is like, you know, young mothers and, um, and people in her age category, early thirties, her demographic is her <laughs> and her friends and the people that are into the same stuff that she is. And then we have here these categories. So you're able to take, so this is a picture of my grandson and wearing his, wearing his t-shirt. Now, if she didn't have these specific pictures, she would have the first image that was in the back end of her decorated products. But she's able to take these specific images and put them into the back end of her store where those pictures pop up and they are more a little bit more personal than than the basic images of the of the t-shirt and i'm going to show you exactly where that is so let's go back to her decorated products which all of your stores have decorated products and here if you these are the different categories that you saw in the front end of her store william syndrome that's funny little nuggets she had this other one here but we were able to we were able to block it and make it private. So let's say you, we were talking before about having stuff that would be relevant to certain um, time frames like Christmas or Halloween or graduation. And let's say it's not that time period and you have all these designs under Christmas, but you don't want that to be the images that are gonna pop up first. You can, you can put that privacy on there and block that for the time period. So that's not coming up. And then you unblock it when the season comes around again so which which really is um you know it's just pretty cool to be able to do those things so okay so for example i'm going to click on this williams syndrome and we're going to edit it and you can see down here we put this thumbnail this picture of colton in here and that's how we are able to put that picture personalize that category to the design that Stephanie wants to show on her website. And here is where, in this area here, is where Roberto um, is giving you the information about putting the keywords, the tag words, the words that are relevant that people are gonna start searching for. Stephanie doesn't have anything in there and she should have um, mm -hmm. um, children with disabilities, Williams syndrome, different things that people are going to relate to, to, you know, to, to find a t-shirt that has that type of artwork on there. Okay. So you hear that, Stephanie, you need to optimize your, your categories here. <laughs> okay. Meta tags are also important. Okay. And Roberto said the meta tags are also important. Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Does everybody understand that where we are in the back end? I know Takia, you don't because you don't have a store yet. <laughs> so, <laughs> but we we can go over that with you, okay? <laughs> and I think if Daniel's still on, he doesn't have a store yet either. But so these, but the, these areas in the back of the website 
that you don't always know we're there, it's, it's, it's really important because this is what is gonna give you that traction and make you relevant or not relevant. Now here, let's go to this one, Little Nuggets. We're gonna edit that one. Okay, and then here's the picture here. Now, where did Stephanie get that picture? I don't know who that, that little boy is, but she got that from, from we have, we subscribe to um, where we get models for you and we put your artwork on those models and they are, it is just so professional looking that, um, you know, it's, it's pretty cool. So we subscribe to that. We can help you do that. We, we have, um, I mean, models in every single category. You can actually even put your URL on a cell phone and, and use that as some marketing pieces. All of these designs here also can be used as posts for Instagram and Facebook and any of your marketing posts. So when we create these for you, you can, um, you can use them anywhere you want. Okay, so under this category here, so we, so we click on this little nuggets category here, and let's say your category, like, I know, like, like um, Kelly's category would be um, hearts <laughs> or flags. Um, and so you, you go here, create a decorated product. So you wanna create a decorated product, and then you pick from any of these products that you're gonna choose from that we can make, that we can print on, so all the products that we have will come up there. Um, we kind of just added some other items for some other customers that asked for some stuff. So we're able to add products. If you, if you don't see something, we can add something that we can get um, on demand. I don't really wanna get something that we have to buy in large quantities, but something we can get on demand and from our suppliers that ship to us. When we buy, I'm gonna say probably three to four times a week, we buy, we buy apparel and mugs and tote bags and whatnot. Okay, so let's say we're gonna pick this t-shirt right here. And wait a minute, I'm in the, I have to move my, my screen here because I can't see what I'm doing here. And we're gonna go save and continue. And then this product comes up. Okay, how do I get rid of this here? Okay, let me just hide this thumbnail here. Okay, and let's say we're just gonna add some text because I don't have graphics here in this, in my laptop here. I'm gonna add text here. So we have a couple different options here. We can add, add for our direct to garment, which is our digital printing, or for our screen printing, which is bulk orders. You can add text here. Um, this is an amazing day. Okay, just came up with something like that. Okay, add the text to it. Now the text is gonna to default to black. So I wanna see what it looks like. I could either change the shirt color or change the text color. I'm just gonna change it to, to pink. It doesn't have to stay pink. And I'm looking at this and now I can move this around. I can center this text. If I don't like the spacing between the lines, I'm gonna show you a little trick that I like to do when, because usually the text comes in and there's a little too much spacing for my taste, but we can change the fonts here. We have about 600 fonts that are defaults into the software. Plus we can add specific fonts. So um, for example, we have one store that, that wanted a specific typeface and we are able to add that into the back end. So we do that on our end first and then you can have the font you want. So, so this is like a modern type of a font right here. Now I'm looking at this design and I'm thinking to myself, you know what, I don't, like I was saying before, I don't like the spacing here. So I'm gonna take this, this word and I'm gonna copy it. I'm gonna select it and then I'm gonna paste it. So I have two of the same size words, sentence here, and I'm gonna delete this. And I'm gonna just keep the word this Okay, 
edit text. So I have this. And then I have then I have this section right here. Okay, I've got this right here. Okay, so that word right there, then I'm going to go to For some reason, I have still have this thing in front of me here. Okay, down here is the is the sentence down here. I'm going to take out these words. Is an and so now I can place them closer together if I want. So I have so I can move this here. I can I can move it there if I feel like. And I can copy and paste it again because I want to keep the same size text. Okay, so now I have the word amazing here. And I just wish that I could see on this computer. So let's say I wanted the word amazing bigger I can I can make that bigger this is an amazing basically I'm kind of redesigning this shirt the way graphically I think it's going to look better so so graphically I'm going to and then I'm just going to do this one again where I can just really really even just paste the same thing I had before Amazing. Day. Okay. Okay. So I can, I can move this around. I can make this bigger if I want. I can, I can play with the fonts. I can. So basically, I took. So I took this one sentence that I came up with for for a shirt, and. And I'm able to take just something that's going to look blah on a shirt to make it look pretty interesting. Now I can, if I felt like it, I can take this word and I can change the typeface. I'm sorry guys, but my, um, my zoom screen here is kind of blocking some of the stuff I'm doing here. So just bear with me. I can resize it vertically if I want, if I want to make it larger. And, and some of you, you could have a store of just sayings on your t-shirts and come up with these great sayings on t-shirts. And you can change the color of, of one of the fonts if you want. Here's the, here's the different colors. You click on the graphic and you can change the color. Let's say you want that to be red. You can make that red. Hit okay, and then that's kind of cool. <laughs> so, so when you're designing a shirt, when you're when you're designing artwork for a shirt, you want to keep in mind how the shirt's going to be worn. Um, is it going to cut off, especially on a woman? Is it going to like cut off where her boobs are? Is it, the image going to be on the stomach? I mean, you want to have a design where it's going to be where the important part of the design or the phrase or the words are going to be seen the most. So you, so we typically start a, a print about what we call three fingers down from the collar. And this bounding box that I have here for you all to work with is really just a visual. We're going to print it. We're going to print it about three fingers down from the collar. And, but we went, when you design something, keep in mind the important image is you don't want that on the belly button or you don't want that um, on the bottom. You want it where people are gonna see it, like, you know, right right on your chest area. Okay, that's a, that's a whole nother topic right there. Mm -hmm. So, all right, I know that I've gone five minutes past our time here. Does anybody yeah, have, have questions. questions? Okay, Probably questions. What you, what you just did there with that customizing. Uh -huh. um, you can set up your, your um, store page where the customer can also view it, right? I've, yes. I've seen yeah. some of that in some other people's stores where you, you can buy the decorated product or you can um, take the, the you, you can take
take the design that's there in the store, or you can do what you just did, right, and make right. your own shirt. Yes, yes. So we have we have stock graphics that you can choose from our stock graphics. You can use any any service that you want to to purchase graphics um, if you want to, um, or you can use our stock graphics. Or someone just puts their own text on. Or your own text. Like you yes, or or your own text. Right, right. Like Joe, you know, for your shirts, we can put your logo on the front, right. and then if let's say you have a friend that wants to put their own thing on the back, they can do that too. Right. 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 Your right. logo is on the shirt. Yeah. Yeah. What's what Stephanie is saying that that and some stores do this too, um, where you we have a phrase on the front, but then you can fill in the word, so it could be this is an amazing, blank, okay. and you can say an amazing party, an amazing month, an amazing lover. You can say whatever you want to say on the shirt, and you can have the customer put whatever words they want in that spot. Because that, that was so, one of the things that, um, I think I'm embarrassing my daughter you, here. <laughs> well, <laughs> some people like to wear that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so which reminds me of a story. Well, one time we were we were we did an event and we make that make these buttons for the kids and we let the kids go and they color the buttons and then they they um you know they see their artwork on the buttons and and we were doing it. And this one guy, an adult, not a kid, came over and he put his phone number yeah. on the button yeah. <laughs> and he gave it to a girl and he, <laughs> and he wanted her to call him. Right. So you it's see, some story. sometimes it works. <laughs> some, sometimes it works. <laughs> yeah, I don't think she wanted him to call. She, want, she, didn't, she didn't want to call him, so he gave it to somebody else. But ten people, somebody's gonna, someone's gonna call. Right, right, right. right. It's a numbers, it's a numbers game, guys. A numbers game. <laughs> okay, all right. So, so does any? We're gonna end this session, and we're gonna post it on YouTube. And does anybody have any last questions? Um, uh, you know. can you Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, I have questions, but they are kind of technical. I don't know if they, about the measurements of the arbor area because I have done some things with Printify already, uh, and I mean I don't know if this is the right time to ask that, or maybe I should ask you by email, or or what? Well, we I could I could talk about that for a second. So so our print area for mm -hmm. our director Gar Kelly you leaving. Okay, bye. Um, our print area for our direct to garment is 12 inches wide by 18 inches long. Now okay. we can add it in other areas as well. So we can add a sleeve imprint, we can do a back imprint, we can go down um, a little bit on the shirt. If you have a double area, some, mm -hmm. some shirts have a, a racer back, like lady shirts, they are a racer back. So the, the area to print on is a little bit unusual. Not a typical t-shirt, but a standard t-shirt area is 12 inches wide by 18 inches high for our direct garment, which is um, almost like a, you don't really have to go 12 inches wide. I'd say yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I, I understand. Yeah. Uh, the, the, now, thank you very much for the information about the messages. And, and I'm gonna start including that in what I'm doing. But so far, what I've done is mostly like painting. Let's put it that way. So, uh, there's so, I mean, uh, if, if my, if some of my designs are just limited to an image, mm -hmm. it, that's fine. Right. With my that's signature. Perfect. That's perfectly fine. That's what Janet's, Janet's store is her artwork. Kelly's okay. store is her artwork as well. Okay. So, Good. Yes. Thank you. Okay. All right. So, um, I need I'm gonna to ask send a question. How how do I um, do? I have to get in touch with you guys and have a, a a consultation or something with you guys to tell us that I you know the ideas that we are coming up with, and yep. um, I'll go from there. How what's my next step? Okay, so the, so the next step is um, I don't ha I, I don't know if I have your email or not, but um, let me give you my phone number. Okay. Actually, I'm going to give you my cell phone number and you okay. can text me your number and text me your email. Okay. okay. So okay. my cell phone number is 954-914-1500. Mm -hmm. 
5144. Mm-hmm. And and you're you're in Portland? Yeah, Portland, Oregon. Okay. Mm-hmm. okay. Okay. All right. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you. Thank you so much. And um and I'll be sending an email out. So so Takia, send me your e- send me your email information and a number and we will get in touch and we'll we'll go from there. Okay, I appreciate it. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. I leave this. Great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>